You might think you know how to take care of your teeth and mouth at home, but are you sure you're doing it correctly? I'm gonna show you in this video the proper steps for maintaining proper oral hygiene at home in under five minutes. Hi, I'm Dr. Brett Langston. I'm an experienced prosthodontist and director of dental implant and aesthetic specialist here in Brookhaven, Georgia. And I'm here to help you watch your mouth. The first step in proper oral hygiene is brushing your teeth. So that comes down to two things. A, what kind of toothbrush you have, and B, what kind of toothpaste you're using. So let's talk about toothbrushes first. Uh, there are lots of variety of toothbrushes, small head, big head, soft, medium, hard bristles. The most important thing is that we never want you using a hard bristle toothbrush. That does damage to the enamel, it does damage to the tissue. Generally speaking, people that use those toothbrushes put a lot of force and pressure on the gum tissue and tooth. We see a lot of erosion, we see a lot of damage. Uh, I'm really not a big fan of medium toothbrushes either. I think they kind of creep into that same cause more damage than good category. My recommendation would be a soft or extra soft toothbrush bristle. Uh, the head size is dependent on what's comfortable for you. We have some patients with a smaller mouth, a big head is not gonna fit in there. We have patients with a bigger mouth and it's gonna take them longer to cover all that area with a smaller toothbrush bristle. So the take home message, soft or extra soft bristle firmness. But also, once you've got the right toothbrush, you need to make sure you're using it correctly. When you come in, obviously brushing the top of the teeth is important, but you also, when you do the sides, you don't wanna come straight down like this because that's just gonna dig into the tissue and not really clean the teeth. If you come in at a 45 degree angle and brush this way, you'll notice that the bristles kind of split on the tooth. So not only are you cleaning the outer surface, the cheek surface, but those bristles are kind of pushing down to getting down in the sulcus right at the gum line and also kind of the top corner of the teeth. So when you do that, you do that for about 10 seconds on each side and then you wanna rotate and do the exact same angle on the inside. Same thing for the front teeth. You wanna get the chewing surface, you want to angle at that 45 degree angles on the front side and 45 degree angle on the back side. And you repeat this process all the way around the mouth. So the 45 degree angle is important because if you just go straight in, you're not giving the bristles a chance to go down into the sulcus. And the sulcus is basically that little tiny pocket where the tooth meets the gum tissue. And a lot of times that's where a lot of bacteria and unhealthy things can be harbored. So if you just come in this way, you're not addressing those areas. If you come in this way, you're gonna damage the tissue. So the 45 degree angle allows you to clean those areas out while also cleaning the teeth at the same time. So a good rule of thumb is what is 45 degrees? It's not right on the top and it's not straight sideways. It's kind of in between the two of those, kind of split the distance. And you'll know you're doing it right when part of the bristles are on top of the tooth and part of the bristles are down in the gums. It's called the bass method or the modified bass method. Basically, if this is your tooth, you wanna angle the toothbrush at about a 45 degree angle right at the gum line, and you wanna spend about two minutes brushing your teeth. So if it helps you to break it down, you can do about 30 seconds in each quadrant. Um, and you need to get the outsides of the teeth, the insides of the teeth, and the tops of the teeth. So if you really wanna get OCD about it, you need to spend about 10 seconds on the outside, 10 seconds on the chewing surface, 10 seconds on the, the roof of the mouth side surface and all four quadrants, and that'll put you at two minutes. You're not really gonna harm anything if you take longer than two minutes. Anything less than that, and you're not doing a good job. Inevitably, you're gonna miss some spots. Repeated missing of spots kind of leads to areas where plaque and decay can build up. How long can you use a toothbrush for? My general rule of thumb is about every six months. Um, that also happens to coincide with how often we see you. Um, we all give all our patients new toothbrushes, um, but uh, some of the newer toothbrushes actually have indicator strips on the bristles that'll kind of wear down. But generally speaking, once you've gone past that six month mark, the bristles get frayed, they get weaker, and so they're not as stiff, and they're not strong enough to kind of get in all those nooks and crannies that you really need it to. And so you're doing yourself a disservice by using kind of a, a frayed toothbrush. One of the options that we have now to a conventional toothbrush are electric toothbrushes. And I'm a big fan of electric toothbrushes. They provide a lot of advantages over a conventional toothbrush. Uh, we have a lot of patients where dexterity is an issue um, and the ability to get the toothbrush into all the areas where they need to clean, it's limited. And so an electric toothbrush, there's kind of two kinds. There's either sonic waves or an oscillating head. And at the end of the day, they both kind of do the same thing. Essentially, the sonic kind sends out waves as the bristles are moving, and so it disrupts the plaque and the biofilm. The oscillating head does the same thing, but it's, it's more of a rotation and movement. Um, at the end of the day, it's two different approaches to the same end result. We've seen phenomenal results with patients that switch to an electric toothbrush. It really allows them in that same two minute time period to get all the areas in their mouth. Uh, as make sure that you are moving it around and, and kind of adhering to the same 30 second per quadrant principle. Uh, my seven year old son likes to just stick it in his mouth and hold it there for two minutes. That's great for those teeth, but it's not doing the job. So make sure that you kind of spread everything around and address all the areas. 
At the end of the day, I definitely prefer an electric toothbrush over a manual toothbrush, but if it's not in your budget or if it's not in something you're looking to do, you can still do a great job with manual, but electric is gonna be more efficient. As far as toothpaste go, there's a whole aisle in the grocery store on toothpaste. Uh, the key message here is it, you wanna make sure you have an ADA approved toothpaste. ADA stands for the American Dental Association. Uh, they're an organization that as dentists, we trust them and we financially support them to make sure all the products that we recommend and that we put on the market uh, are not only safe, but they're healthy for your mouth. There are lots of different options of toothpaste from your super whitening to your sensitive, and they all pretty much do the same thing. But I would avoid anything with extra whitening, you know, claims of the, the wow, super bright factor. Uh, and the reason is a lot of those toothpaste, in order to get that bright result uh, will have really large particles. And the problem with that is they, they tend to not only remove the debris, but they can also scratch your enamel. And when you scratch the enamel, all of a sudden it's more susceptible to stains. And so it's kind of, it creates this cycle where you brush the teeth with this aggressive toothpaste and everything looks great, but you're gonna be more prone to stain. And, and at the end of the cycle, you're actually damaging your teeth a little bit. The other key factor is you wanna make sure it has fluoride in it. In our diet now, we're drinking a lot of bottled water so people aren't getting fluoride, and we're finding that the lack of fluoride in the diet is, is actually really decreasing. And with people not drinking city water, not drinking fluoride in their diet, they don't have the strength of their teeth that they used to have. So we're seeing a lot more, I call them nitpicky cavities, which are basically right at the gum line, areas where the enamel used to be really strong, but it doesn't have the fluoride. Um, and fluoride basically helps remineralize and recrystallize that outer tooth structure. Uh, so make sure your toothpaste has fluoride in it. Um, you know, there are some fluoride intense toothpaste like Sensodyne uh, and other brands that are for people that have sensitive teeth. Those are great because they actually have a greater content of fluoride and it helps the tooth kind of rebuild itself. Uh, so if you have kind of tooth sensitivity, Number one, come let, come see us, let us take a look, make sure there's nothing going on. Uh, but if everything's healthy, but you just got kind of thinned out enamel, those sensitivity toothpaste are great because they can kind of help the tooth really rebuild itself. And I'm gonna show you the proper amount of toothpaste to use. It's not rocket science, but I don't want you wasting toothpaste. I wanna make sure you use the right amount. So the good rule of thumb is you wanna basically put a pea-sized amount right on the toothbrush. Uh, then go through brushing your teeth. This is too much toothpaste. It's one of those less is more. You really only need about a pea-sized amount of toothpaste on your toothbrush. Uh, any more than that and you're just wasting toothpaste. Any less than that and you're not quite getting enough. So before you just go to the grocery store and, and buy sensitive toothpaste, if you're having tooth sensitivity, um, there are a variety of reasons to discuss that. But the best thing to do before you jump to that is come see us, let us take a look. You know, a lot of times tooth sensitivity is a result of either a, a starting to cavity, uh, a failing restoration, a, a crown that's having breakdown around the edges. Um, and these are all things that sensitive toothpaste might kind of dull the, the discomfort, but it's not gonna solve the problem. Uh, so come see us, let us take a look. If everything looks great and we just have sensitive teeth, those, those toothpastes are great. They do a really good job of helping kind of build the tooth back up and helping knock out any of those other minor issues. But it's better to see us first and help make the decision of which toothpaste is right for you. If you're brushing your teeth for two minutes, that leaves us three more minutes to get the rest of your mouth clean. The next step is flossing, and we've got a great video about the different kinds of floss. Essentially, with flossing, you're addressing all those areas where your toothbrush can't get to. It's a vital part of keeping your mouth clean. In addition to flossing your teeth, I would definitely recommend a mouthwash. Uh, what that does, not only does it remove all the extra debris that you've created from brushing and flossing, uh, it can also get areas where you don't typically brush and floss, like your tongue, your cheeks, um, the rest of the other areas. On that note, we also have options for tongue scrapers, which are a great option if you have uh, not fresh breath feeling, uh, if you're not feeling well. Uh, tongue scrapers are basically plastic instruments that you scrape your tongue. Uh, it does a really good job of kind of cleaning off any kind of plaque or biofilm on the surface of your tongue. If you have any kind of bone loss, gum recession, any areas that floss doesn't feel like it's adequate, I would highly recommend interproximal brushes or go-betweens uh, that'll help you get in there and floss and keep those areas clean. So there's no reason that the whole routine every morning and every night should take more than five minutes. It's a good habit to get into and it's gonna help you maintain the, the teeth that you want. And as we say here, you only have to brush the teeth you wanna keep. Clean your teeth properly at home is the first step in maintaining a healthy mouth. However, I highly recommend maintaining a good six month recall. So that way we can come in, check your teeth, check your mouth, make sure everything is clean, healthy, cancer screening, everything we can do to make sure you're not missing or overlooking anything. Until next time, I'm Dr. Brett Langston, helping you watch your mouth.